morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Vanessa, two daughter. And um, when Rafaela gave, uh, asked me to, to talk to you guys, I was like, hell no, uh, because uh, public speaking is not one of my things. So I just said, okay, this is a new year. I'm going to learn how to get out of my comfort zone and force myself to, to actually um, learn how to speak in public better. And so this is one of the challenges. Yeah, because usually yeah. I, I'm a very... Um, lonely work because when I'm painting murals, when I'm illustrating, I do it a lot alone. So this is a good way for me to balance that type of um, creative process. So, okay. Um, so this is Roots and I'm from Cape Town, uh, South Africa. I, I, was, I was born there uh, exactly 36 years ago. It uh, doesn't look like it, but uh, <laughs> so um, I'm a bit nervous, so I'm just going to imagine everybody naked. So if I start looking at you so weird, just don't, you know. So, um, so yeah, I was born in Cape Town. Uh, the, that girl next door is my sister. And we came to Lisbon about eight, nine years ago. I mean, nine, I mean when I was eight, exactly. So it was like 20 something years ago. Although I still have my, um, my accent, which I try to keep the most as I can, because that's one of the things that I feel that helps me remember my roots and what's, where I come from. Um, so yeah, so as you can see, I'm still a bit of a clown. <laughs> Not much has changed, uh, or it has, what is Creatively, yes, and, and so I'm going to start with my inspirations because a lot of people, when they see my work for the first time, they always say, um, oh, but the, that, you, some African influences there, and I'm like, then I speak and it's like, oh, you're Australian, I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> seriously? But, but no. Um, so I get a lot of influences from, from Africa in general, not just South Africa, although the Libele is more uh, South African side. Uh, tribe and um, so I try to to keep uh, the, m the most of, uh, as I can in my work uh, as an African tribute and to attribute to my my roots. Uh, for example, we can change the next one also. This is a lot of black and white, which is something I love to do in my work. I love to do um, uh, lots of monotone black and white with another color, and especially the street art. Face is very influenced in this type of um, style. Um, go okay, so I'm probably going a bit faster than I'm supposed to, so I'll just slow slow. <laughs> so, um, what what are my influences besides the South African tribes and African tribes? Uh, I'm, I'm very influenced by uh, comic books, uh, female icons, which are like badasses. So maybe being also in the street art um, area, which is mostly uh, male dominated for now, uh, it helps me uh, get more women to the, to the scene. So um, I think that drawing like Frida Kahlo's Wonder Woman's and getting a lot of uh, female icons in my work, it's, uh, it helps me reinforce the idea that um, women are badass and they can also paint murals and stuff. Uh, also, my dad is a graphic designer, so from an early age I, I was always in contact with uh, graphic design, 80s style. Um, he had a lot of books like from Milton Glaser, from Memphis Art Movement, lots of pop art, Andy Warhol, okay, uh, pop art, Andy Warhol. And so these are a lot of influences. My dad had a graphic design uh, firm, a quick printing design firm. So that's usually where I usually spent most of my summers, a bit um, against my will. <laughs> but I'd say that I learned a lot about uh, being in contact with, um, with the old school designers, the first Macintoshes, the letter sets, all that kind of stuff that has a lot to do with graphic design. And <coughs> so yeah. Uh, one. So this is a bit of my earlier phases, my, um, how do you say, I, I didn't like to keep, um, how do you say, I'm just back now. Uh, I like to fill up all the, the empty spaces, I'm very, because I have a lot of, I think that I have a lot of um, uh, things in my mind that I use it <coughs> to just like vomit uh, everything on my work. <laughs> so that's why most of my work is very intricate and very, um, 
say, so you took it very... It's got a lot going on. Just, yeah, I kept placing it, sorry. I'm not worried. I'll leave it. Um, so yeah, uh, I usually, as you can see, most of these images all have uh, female looking or icons or women or the African masks, um, the Medusa, the, the three-headed three lady, uh, the mouse, which is one of my, my also um, mostly, uh, what you said, my logo, which is also an interesting fact because I express myself better with images than I do with actually speaking, so the mouth is actually a bit of a, a way to say, okay, I can speak through images, so here's the mouth, and just like, let me just be quiet in those days. <laughs> so, now you know why. <laughs> so, next one is the evolution of uh, what I think is my artwork. So before, you could see the very colorful, very intricate, and slowly getting to something that still has the African influences with the, with the black and white and the geometric pieces, but as you can see, it's not getting a bit less, um, less cartoony and a bit, let's just say, childish, getting to something that's clean and clean and just gets a bit more abstract. Um, so even though I was, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> even though I think that I try to stay, uh, how do you say, I try to stay faithful to my style, I still want to have some coherence in the whole thing. You guys can actually see that it's from the same person, but it's just growing. The same thing is like before I used to sign as the super van, which I did for 10 years, and last year I stopped because I thought it was like part of my evolution as an artist. Uh, besides, I don't want to be like 70 and there's like, oh, there's a super van. I'm like, yeah, it's kind of a bit strange, like weird. So um, I just signed out Vanessa to go. And now you can, al you can always say, you know, Vanessa Tidoro, previously known. Previously, yeah, like the, like, like Prince, the Prince, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah. Um, and, yes, uh, growing with my work, so this is something that I think that has helped me um, just keep, keep keeping my style and just go with the black and white instead of the color, which for me is a personal preference. Although sometimes clients would like to see more color. But in any case, I'm going to show you now um, ways to, to keep your work fresh uh, in, the, in the art market here in Swiss in Portugal. Uh, as an artist, I think that it's kind of easy to get bored and uh, get bored and like um, just, uh, how do you say it, um, get bored with your work and just trying to, to, to make things fresh and new <coughs> and yeah. Okay, so um, I think that you have to ch try and change your medium, try to, to do something different. Um, <coughs> and for, for example, this is a, a jaguar that I painted in China before the coronavirus. Um, <laughs> and, and, <laughs> so, uh, it's a good way to, to show crime set uh, as an artist who versatile. And, um, and yeah, so. And this is a recent job I did for uh, Ritz Hotel in Lisbon. Uh, it was a bit of a challenge uh, because it was the first time I actually did something in 3D. Um, and this I think has a, has a video which we're going to show you now. Quando o Ritz me propôs esta parceria, eu fiquei entusiasmada com o desafio. Foi interessante tentar perceber como é que o meu estilo ia se enquadrar com o estilo do Ritz, como é que o meu traço meio caótico e gráfico ia se enquadrar com o glamour e o requinte do hotel. Gosto de deixar um bocadinho das minhas raízes, das minhas peças, um bocadinho da minha identidade. Eu inspiro-me muito na minha infância, na África do Sul. Baseio-me muito nos padrões africanos, no grafismo dos, das tribos de Ndabele, do preto e branco.
a ideia era simplificar ao máximo as peças, de modo a contrabalançar um pouco dos excessos e dos clichês que há no Natal, daquele mundo todo excessivo e consegui, através de uma simplificação mesmo estrutural das peças, uma árvore de Natal muito clean, os reis magos também com figuras muito geométricas, também inspiradas na, nas peças do Almada de Negreiros, que estão por todo o hotel. Para este projeto, consegui, ainda mantendo-me fiel ao meu estilo, atenuar um pouco a parte mais fã e ir buscar um bocadinho peças e grafismos mais requintados de acordo com a minha, minha visão do que é o Ritz. Foi giro incluir as letras Ritz na, na árvore natal, de modo também a haver um, um pouco de um desafio para as pessoas que passam tentarem encontrar as palavras. Também quis, quis criar um momento uh, diferente e, e impactante através de, do movimento giratório da árvore. Achei que, que ia remeter bastante ao, aos brinquedos do antigamente, os brinquedos de corda. Para mim, o um Natal é um momento para estar em família. As pessoas geralmente ficam muito ligadas ao consumismo e realmente não é isso que importa. Importa estarmos todos juntos, estarmos perto de quem gostamos e isso sim é mesmo a magia do Natal. on the right or the no left sorry uh, or the three wise men the the personification or the, the idea of I wanted something that wasn't too Christmassy you know so I wanted something that was modern and that would fit my style like a very uh, African strong statue kind of geometric thing so this is what I came up with actually in the beginning I'm going to tell you guys a secret um, the, I did the three totems but they didn't have the, the the crowns on them because of the, I, didn't think, I didn't want it to be too Christmassy. So the whole idea was just making those different pieces with the, the Christmas tree. And the, my client said, oh, but this is not very Christmassy. Uh, so I, I tried it, um, how do you, I tried it to, I tried to keep, keep the idea and the, the structure. And I said, okay, what's, what has three items in it? And it's Christmas. Okay, so it's like, oh, the three kings, yay. So I just <laughs> stuck the crowns on top of it. And then they like, yeah, that works. I'm like, Okay, cool. <laughs> so, so yeah, that initially didn't have the crowns. So, I, <coughs> so make things work. So that's one of my tips also for the next, next chapter. Keeping it fresh, trying to do different things with your work, still trying to keep, as I say, the mouth, which is very present in my work, and then keeping the patterns, different types of mediums. This was actually a dress that uh, was sort of ad, ad, an ad, underwater advertisement. This was in a the storm down beneath the uh, Olympic swimming pool, which I don't have the video here because we don't have a lot of time. But this was uh, <coughs> one of the, the, the pieces that was made for this. Um, and then, of course, trying to sell your soul a bit for different different clients. Um, in this case, uh, I did a, a customization of some bags for Louis Vuitton, um, and um, yeah, keeping my keeping. <laughs> Keeping my style, um, my style, trying African style, but toning it down a bit because actually I don't think that this type of client would actually be okay with having like the, the more fun part with the miles and the and the little, little people jumping up everywhere. So I had to actually do a tone down of my style, but still keeping myself present. Um, and this is uh, what I came up with, which then actually gave um, made way for the other projects that. Um, that have like the, the Ritz and the other high-end brands. 
uh, to have like two different styles, a more um, fun with the miles and the patterns and then one that's toned down a bit but still uh, has my main idea of my style inside. Yeah, okay. So, next please. Okay, so um, this was done last year. This is a job that I did for ML, which most of you probably don't like. Um, <laughs> they don't just find cars, they also do cool stuff. Uh, although many of you don't know. Um, so this is in Entrkampus, near the Chasse of Tordus. Um, and the project here, the idea that the, what the client asked me to help them with was, this has been always, uh, this has been tagged a lot. So um, how to avoid tagging and save them money by not being over, always painting over 50,000 pounds. Uh, so they asked me to do uh, this this area and the other side, which <coughs> is not in the photo. But the idea was to create um, layouts that had, of course, my style in it, but that weren't very that that would work in a large, uh, in a large <coughs> environment. So a lot of walls to do, a lot of things. I even painted the floors and everything. So um, what I wanted was if there would be tags or tagging. Uh, because there are a lot of patterns, the tags would, would kind of lose impact. So, for example, on the lift, which, was the, which is the area that's most vandalized, because they had like those, those patterns there, if somebody tagged it, it would kind of just lose um, importance. So, this was done in May last year, and I could say that since now it hasn't been very vandalized that much. So um, this is one of the, the ideas that comes with problem solving, keeping your style, trying to keep your style, trying to make things work with your style. So in this case, black and white, of course, uh, my personal option. But even so, people, when I was passing, is ah, is this from Boa Vista Football Club? I'm like, she's serious. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, no. Why did you put some color? And I'm like, oh. No, so the idea that it's just black and white is also because um, because the patterns are very dense. If I did patterns in color, it would be like a whole mess. It would be like you'd, your eyes would go like this. <coughs> so I kind of just thought that this would actually look cool with black and white. And of course, there aren't many street art pieces in Lisbon that are black and white. So I wanted to also there to make a difference. <coughs> and plus, black and white is Lisbon's colors, so that's always a good excuse to sell to the customer. <laughs> but but yeah. Okay, so I'm going to show you the making of video, just so you can get an idea of the work.
Um, also, interesting fact, uh, I had a friend of mine that's also a writer. He's uh, he asked me a bit filling in the, the patterns. And uh, uh, one of, one of the, the days, this, this guy just came up to him, and we were both painting side by side. And the guy, this guy just came up to him and said, oh, good work, good job. Um, this is really cool. And he was like, pointed to me, she's the artist. And he was like, oh, sorry. Yeah, something that happens a lot in street art. Just um, a side note. Um, so, so now I'm going to give you some tips, I think. Should be there. Yeah. So, things I've learned in the last 10 years as a freelance uh, artist. Um, okay. Uh, another trip. Well, uh, clients don't know what they want. Uh, it's a lot of times uh, people and colleagues and friends have asked, how did you get this client? How, how did you get them to do this? I was like, dude, I just went there, showed them this idea, and they were like, oh, that's a good idea. So uh, that happens a lot. <laughs> um, especially if you're a freelancer and you don't have things to do. The idea just of um, uh, just being proactive and doing something. Like if you imagine that you see this brand that you like and you you said, I could do this with this person. Um, the, the worst thing that can happen is a no. And if it, even if you get a no, you, you always get portfolio work, you know? So, I mean, that's how I got a lot of jobs in the beginning. Um, I kind of just approached some brands and said, look, this would be cool. And also the fact that I used to work in an, as an art director in advertising agencies helped me a lot with the briefing part and the approaching the client part. So that was an extra for me. Um, make what you want to see see out there. So. there you go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I speak from my experience, of course. I used I used to be a very competitive um, person, more more so that I, I kind of got very stressed out by comparing my work with uh, other artists and other colleagues. More so as um, I was like, okay. How come this person did this and I'm still doing this? So the, the idea here is try to not compare your beginning with somebody else's middle. Um, and comparison, as I say, is, is not very good for, for our happiness. So basically just uh, compete with yourself <coughs> and what, what you've done before. And that, that would help you uh, a lot. Just focusing on your own thing. Um, that's a very, very important lesson that I learned in the last 10 years was to um, just do you, just don't compare yourself and of course share ideas with colleagues and friends but just do your own thing because we all have our own journey and um, that's the best journey to have. So. <laughs> okay, so there's another thing I've learned. Um, it's better to have 10 people love your work and 10 people hate it than 100 people going, ah, it's nice, it's okay because that 100 won't buy your work, probably. They won't uh, uh, ask for some kind of uh, job or anything. They would say, okay, that's cool, but it's not like, do I really want it? Um, so I prefer having like 10 really loyal people that actually love my work and that would invest in my art and my design or whatever. Um, and having haters is also cool because that's the sign you're doing something right. Because uh, you kind of, you make them think or you challenge them in some way that they feel like they, they don't like your work, or maybe it's just, you know. Uh, but, uh, I mean, that's, that's something that I think we have to focus on, is um, having our own niche, and not trying to, to make everybody like your work, because that will never happen. Um, so, this is another thing that I've learned, um, which is, especially in small countries, like here in Portugal, uh, we are very, um, how do you say, I'm not going to say kunish, but, <laughs> but we're very, uh, by recommendation, we, know, we don't trust strangers. So you have to get yourself out there and get known so people can actually recommend your work. Uh, even, if, if, even if you're like, say, a talented person, really talented, but nobody knows you, you won't get a chance. Uh, you might get, but you won't get like a really good chance. And you might be a less talented person, but because you know a lot of people, that also happens. I've seen them, yeah. uh, It's very, whatever. 
So um, you just have to network yourself a lot, and these events are great for it. So um, yeah, so that's basically what you guys are going to do afterwards. So network, network, and I think yeah, that's it. <laughs> so hope you enjoyed it. Yeah. So thank you very much for coming. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, <coughs> yeah. guys, we have like two, three minutes for a Q&A. &A, so <laughs> we have questions. Oh God, I forgot about that. Uh, hard questions, easy questions, whatever. Mm -hmm. Vanessa. I have, I have several questions. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll also them. Okay. So first of all, are you planning to give color? Again, or are you just on black and white? Um, yes, color is coming soon <laughs> in a theatre near you. Um, well, uh, yes, because I'm doing this new, um, I'm not sure if you guys saw before the, the neon mouth, I'm doing more uh, artwork based on neon um, lighting, which will be more colourful, yes. That, so it's a different medium, so it will have colour. So where do you start? What's the first thing you draw? Because you, you presented several... Mm. Photos of yeah. work, and at least the ones with more African influence, yes. you have several things. So, what's your starting point there? Uh, it's one figure. It's well, the the more intricate pieces. Um, I usually draw everything by hand, and then I just uh, I scan them up and then just build them up as a puzzle piece on the computer. Um, basically. Depending on the briefing, if it's a, just a freestyle thing, I just draw whatever I feel that's in my head and just has to go onto the paper. When it's like a briefing from a brand or something, I kind of have to answer to certain uh, requests, like uh, say for Compile, I had to draw an orange with a thingy and, and the bottle and whatever. But usually I always keep my, um, my main elements, like the Afri African patterns, the mouths, the masks, the female icons, in my work when I can. Uh, but yes, I usually draw a sketch and then pass it all on the computer and then just go from Photoshop and Illustrator from there. So the last question, where can you buy that amazing dress? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's a one, it's a unique piece. Uh, it's, at the moment it's somewhere, which I'm not sure where, <laughs> but it's at the client's um, and it's going to be sh shown in Porto soon this year. So. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, any other questions? Okay. Yeah. Painting like works in such a large scale. Do you do like a sketch of the first in a small size? Um. Yes. In in the case of the ML uh, job, that was I kind of had to show the, the guys uh, some sketches. They were like a little bit strange, but the those the murals were kind of freestyle. Although I knew that I wanted to do patterns, I kind of had like a few pieces of paper and said, okay, this fits here, this fits there, and it was kind of just like going with the flow. But usually on other murals, like, um, I don't think I showed any. There's other murals that I just have to have, of course, the, the sketch, and then I kind of go like, um, kind of eyeball it. So, so yeah, that's usually a sketch, of course. Okay, so now many any more questions? Okay. Uh, uh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Uh, do you like more uh, working, like for example, uh, in a design on a computer or mm. outdoors, like uh, on yours? Mm. Um, I would probably say outdoors. Uh, it is physically more challenging. Uh, but I have more contact with people, which is good because sometimes when you're in your studio and illustration and just like you feel like a hermit a bit, you're like, oh, my precious, you know. <laughs> and then, um, uh, but I like prefer murals, of course, and it's a better way for me to get my work out there. So it's kind of like an outdoor gallery, which is also a good way to show work. Um, and I just like the interaction with people, like the, the older people is super cool and they're like, oh, Nina Fazish, it's like, yeah. <laughs> so, like, so that's a cool part of my job, yeah. Okay, no. Question, do you have any ties to still to South Africa? Do you have any problems? Uh, do I have, uh, yes, well, my, the, half of my family still lives there. Um, so I go there yeah, when... Uh, not really, actually. I'm trying to see if I can work on that more like this year or probably next year. It's strange enough, we don't actually 
invest in, in the places we know because we always want to go like, I want to try this place, I want to go there. So I haven't actually tried to, to show in South Africa, but I want to soon, yes. Yes, you are running out of time. Okay, just one more person. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah. Um, in your Mm -hmm. And I was wondering how do you know that because they, they hire you to, so they probably like your style already. Mm -hmm. Why do you think you have to uh, oh. suppress it? Okay, well, they, they, I had worked with Louis Vuitton before uh, for, the launch of, um, uh, for the launch of their Lisbon City Guide. So I did a, a canvas uh, before, which had a very geometric black and white style. Although I did give two proposals. I'd, I'd made two sketches, and one was more like the regular style, and one was toned down, because I always thought, these guys are too, you know. Mm. Uh, so yeah. I'll give them two options. So playing it safe, I gave them a more toned down style, although it's still my style, which of course they preferred. Uh, because you kind, of, you kind of start to get to know a client better when it's, well, of course, it's Louis Vuitton. They don't have like very uh, fancy and um, uh, very youngish kind of style. It's very like a different market. So I wanted to give them, well, actually save work because imagine if I just did one style, which was my style, and they would say, no, you have to do something else. So I just back up. I did the the more geometric, although different, but my style. Yeah. So. I know we're running a little bit late, so sorry. I promise next time, uh, you know, it'll be faster. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you won't leave here without a nice gift. So it's giveaway time. Yeah. And um, so, yeah. Yeah, so we have a little raffle. As uh, Tina, if you're here, so, so uh, on point said this is very good blackmail. So it's black and white blackmail, actually. It's a poster of Vanessa's work. So everyone, you should have gotten a little white, uh, little yellow paper when you came in. Please take it out so you can see the number when we actually announce it. I'm gonna let, let Vanessa take. Okay. They're all in there folded up. She's not looking. There's the big drum roll. <laughs> Workout time. Okay. Okay. Oh, number? It's a little tiny. Thirty-two. Number 32. Who's number 32? Yeah. Yeah. He's the winner! <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> okay, cool. Awesome. Okay. Hi. Congratulations. <laughs> Hi. And the Oscar goes to... Exactly. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> so, I hope you had a great time. You know, just have a great day. Okay, well you can... Did someone, did someone ask, her, ask a question? No. Okay. okay wonderful. So yeah. Yeah. No, they just go. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Have fun, guys. Thank you. Thank you.